Hi students, in this video we are going to see the rapid view of the development of the tongue for the theory purpose. So first we are see, going to see the arches, there is something called as pharyngeal arches. From the pharyngeal arches only most of the structures from the head and neck are getting developed. So you have first to six arches, the fifth arch disappears. So you do have one, two, three, four and the fifth arch, understood? So five arches. So sixth will be, now it is called as, because fifth one disappears, so sixth one. So there are five arches and the first arch, look at this, the ventromedial portion of the first arch, it is because it forms as a bulge and it is called as lateral lingual swellings and in the midline also you have a bulge in the first arch it is called as medial lingual swelling so these two are called lateral lingual and this is called medial lingual the median lingual is otherwise called as tuberculum impar so if you write these three you will get one mark lateral lingual swellings and the tuberculum impar then second arch also the window medial portion is get thickened and it forms a bulge it is called copula c o p u l a copula okay this one and then third, third arch and the fourth arch, they turn join together and form an eminence called hypobranchial eminence. So look at this third and fourth. And the last one, they look at the fourth, fourth is here. And uh, this one next to that, you have the uh, sixth arch, you have the arytenoid swelling. This sixth arch usually it forms the cartilages of larynx. This is the arytenoid swelling. Here is the laryngeal inlet. So these are the arches, these are the bulges. So first arch bulges you have to mention, these two lateral lingual swellings, they enlarge in size and they fuse with the median lingual swelling that is your tuberculum impar and totally together they form the anterior two third of the tongue. In between the tuberculum impar and the cupola there is a foramen that is called as foramen cecum and from here only the thyroglossal duct starts. Okay, that we will see in the next video. So first you should write two lateral lingual swellings and the tuberculum impar. They join together and forms the anterior two third of the tongue. And behind that just uh, just in front of the foramen cecum. So behind the foramen cecum from the second arch this blue color swelling is called cupola. The third and fourth arches they join together and forms the there is a swelling in the ventromedial aspect that is called as hypobranchial eminence. Now in the hypobranchial eminence that when uh, anterior for the first front part of the hypobranchial eminence they overgrow and they overgrow above the uh, cupola and the cupola is getting submerged so you cannot see something called this cupola because this yellow color third arch overlaps this cupola so now you can see the yellow color which forms the posterior one third of the tongue so behind that you have the uh, this this portion the uh, posterior portion of the hypobranchial eminence that will be transformed into the posterior most portion of the tongue. So the anterior part of the tongue in front of the foramen cecum over and posterior part of the tongue usually it has to be cupola but cupola is overgrown by the anterior portion of the hypobranchial eminence. So this posterior one third of the tongue entire thing is formed by the yellow color that is posterior one third. Behind that lower part of the hypobranchial eminence will be transformed into posterior one third of the tongue and this last swelling that fourth arch swelling this will be transformed into epiglottis right so these are the derivatives this is a laryngeal inlet orifice so look at this here you can nicely you can see the swelling this is a real embryological picture and this is how it is being formed the fusion of the lateral lingual swellings towards the midline they form the midline groove and inside the deep inside you have the lingual septum okay these two join together this area this can you see this line this is the midline okay inside deep inside it forms a lingual septum and the foramen cecum also you should not forget to write so what now like this all the structures are being formed and the muscles of the tongue is formed by occipital myotomes okay there is myoblast nothing but the myoblast and then nerve supply anterior two-third is coming from the first start so it is supplied by the uh, mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve right first arch nerve is trigeminal nerve then mandibular uh, division of trigeminal nerve, second arch is facial nerve because I said second arch will not play a role because it is overlapped by the third arch. So posterior one third of the tongue third arch. So third arch nerve is glossopharyngeal nerve that is why your posterior one third of the tongue is supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve. Posterior most is derived from the fourth arch so it is supplied by vagus superior laryngeal part so vagus nerve superior laryngeal nerve. So this is how you have to write the nerve supply. So this is about the general sensory and only the special anterior two third of the tongue is by the cauda tympani. Not, 
so the facial nerve does not come into the picture except for the cauda tympani which supplies the anterior third special sensation understood taste pathway that's all about the tongue and the tongue initially when it is getting developed the entire tongue, tongue is attached to the floor so what happens the tongue is attached to the floor full floor so uh, so everything will be attached now what happens towards the end that entire the floor of the tongue is getting degenerated only one part the tip only it is attached to the floor by the frenulum lingulae when the frenulum lingulae uh, if it doesn't get degenerated the floor the entire floor part doesn't get degenerated that uh, tongue uh, is tightly adherent to the floor it leads to tongue tie that is called ankyloglossia so the ankyloglossia tongue tie is the only word you are supposed to write so the tongue uh, is not freed from the floor of the mouth so normally cell degeneration occurs so frenulum is the only part which is attached to the tongue if it fails to degenerate the entire portion of the tongue will be attached to the floor it is called as angiloglossia and by fit tongue also you can write so the sometimes lingual cyst also you can write near the foramen cecum you will be having a cyst that is lingual cyst that's all about the tongue development